Right, so I went back and chose the other option with Natsume, which was whether you say, I care about you, or anyone would do the same, and it's equally as bad. <laughs> So we've, we're just sticking with the, uh, but I care about you, you know, make it a little more personal. While thinking on this, Shu tries to go back with the rest of the day, albeit a bit distractedly. And I think that's where we left it. There's a cold tingling sensation surrounding him. Oh good, we're, we're underwater again. Shu's eyelids flutter open and he's somehow unsurprised that he's underwater again. This again? If I know I'm dreaming, that makes this one of these lucid dreams, huh? His hair is floating up in tendrils around him and Shu feels a few moments of serenity before realising he has no oxygen. Yeah, Shu, mate, I don't know how to tell you this, but if there's no oxygen, you're probably fine. Like, because <laughs> you've survived a few minutes as is. Mm. He follows Bubbles towards what seems to be the surface of the water, but stops cold when he feels a searing pain on his head. Before long, he can hear a voice, quiet at first, but it quickly increases in volume and intensity. Where are you going? Why must you keep putting yourself in harm's way? Huh? What is that supposed to mean? The deaths you should have already realised. The people you love are going to continue dying. This is an uncomfortable truth that Shu has tried his best not to think about. He has only made this far by focusing on one problem at a time. He's afraid that if he stops running to look at his surroundings, he'll fall behind and something irreversible will happen. If those close to you are going to die one by one, maybe it's better if you stop getting close to people. If you're alone, then maybe no one will have to die. Shu doesn't pause for even a second before responding. I can't live like that, not anymore. If they target Natsume or someone else I care about, I'll save them, no matter what. The voice goes silent. I can't go on like I used to anymore, just being selfish and only caring about people I could use. Doing everything just to protect myself, it's way too boring. And lonely. The water around him begins to feel warmer and Shu feels the other presence leave him. With his lungs burning, he fights his way to the surface. He fights to live. That was a little more than the dream. That has to be some sort of, I don't know, like, limbo-like state, for lack of a better word. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Because weren't we there when we were trying to remember shit? I can't remember, honestly, but... Mm, there's more to that. We're not dreaming. Just as he breaks through the surface of the water, she awakens. He finds himself not in the middle of a vast ocean, but right back in the, his dorm room and bed. I can remember the dream this time. Was that supposed to be a warning? Oh, you reckon? You think that was a warning? <laughs> quickly, fetch the clever hat. Shu has figured something out. He quickly dismisses the thought. Dreams are just crap made up by our brains, but that means my brain's pretty paranoid. I guess anyone would be worried after seeing their brother and childhood friend get killed, though. I wanted to sleep in since it's Sunday. Why am I awake? Because you just had a nightmare. His mind wanders back to the dream, and as much as he wants to forget it, he starts mulling over various things. Even if my friends and family are being targeted, there's nothing I can do about that. I don't know who the killer is or why the hell they're doing all this. I just have to stop them and save everyone. Mate, just go back in time to when they were killed, and as opposed to immediately going back as active, go back in stealth. There you go, and then you can see who killed someone. Like, yes, you'll have to watch him die, but you've already seen two people die and you know you're going to save them at this point, that's fine. I can't not get close to people, it's too late for that. I have people I want to protect now, I won't take them for granted again. Shu's mind wanders to his brother Natsume. Why has Natsume been so on edge lately? How does he really feel about everything? When will he ever stop blaming himself for everything? Shu surprises himself with how much the hypothetical answers matter to him. He didn't used to care too much about anybody but himself, after all. After a dream like that, I feel like I have to be honest and own up to how I feel about people. I mean, you never know when someone might just... He can't bring himself to continue that thought. It's too early in the day for him to think about death. All this time travel stuff has already messed with me enough. I just want to live as normally as I can, as much as I can. Mate, you have a time-travelling machine. I mean, 
To a certain extent, it's just not going to happen until you relinquish that, I'm sorry. He thinks that the people he cares about and drifts back to sleep, feeling a little warmer and a little safer. How many days have passed? An amount, it'll say. After class lets out, Shu checks his phone to see a text message from Natsume. I'm so, 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 so excited about cooking dinner tonight. What do you want to make? Let's go shopping. No man should be that excited about going shopping. Something is amiss here and I feel I'm about to be murdered. Oh yeah, I almost forgot about that. I wonder what we should cook. The finest lasagna available. That or burgers. I, either of those options kick ass. After meeting up with Natsume, the two of them go into town to buy groceries. I hate that. It's like fucking... Uh, what is it with Americans' terms? Doing groceries? Way too generic. And what's the other one? Uh, I've got I've got some chores to do. That's so wildly vague. Because it could mean, oh yeah, I'll be out for the next six hours. It could mean, I owe someone a favour. It Wildly vague. Americans, I'm telling you, man. I'm surprised you didn't have to work today. Oh, I wouldn't leave you hanging. <laughs> Thanks, man. Seeing Natsume like this, it makes it feel like that whole thing with the sleeping pills didn't happen. I always knew Natsume treated us differently than other people, but... He's never been that cold and closed off to me before. Now, he must have. He just don't remember it, or you were too little to remember. At first, it feels strange to shoot to just let that slide and act normally, but Natsume's upbeat attitude proves to be infectious. So, what are we cooking? What do you want to eat? You can leave the cooking to me, don't worry. Hmm. If it was a few months ago, I would have totally just left it to him, but... Now, we're supposed to cook something together, right? It wouldn't be fair for me to just make you do all of it. I can't do anything fancy, but I'll help out. Shoo. Okay, I get it. How about curry, then? It's pretty easy to make, and we can sp- Don't say that about curry! Fuck me, that's like the only thing I can cook, which is a speciality. Don't say the curry's easy. Bastard, I'm- oh, I've just gone off Natsume very quickly. And we can split up the work. Sure, that sounds good. What was he looking to prepare? Out of interest, because he almost seemed disappointed when he mentioned curry. What did he want to do? Did he want to cook like a five-tier cake? Made of unicorns and rainbows? Ugh. Great! Doesn't he ever get tired of keeping up that double personality? You could say something. Yeah. Shu's gotten closer to Natsume ever since they moved into the dorms together. But there's also this strange sense of distance that wasn't there before. Or maybe I just never noticed it before. It's that. Shu? Huh? Oh, sorry, I was spacing out. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> he knows. After buying all the things they need, they head back to the dorms as soon as the sun starts to set. Shu and Natsume go back to their rooms to change out of their uniforms, then meet up in the kitchen to get started on cooking. Natsume puts the groceries on the table and the two of them start sorting out the ingredients. How many people are we cooking? But Why have I changed clothing? Like, to that of all things. When you change out of school clothes, you have to change into something comfy. And he was in the school clothes, got back to cook and put on a leather jacket. That, I mean, those just aren't flexible. Oh, uh, whatever. So do you want to cook the meat or cut the vegetables? Uh, which one's easier? Cooking the meat. Uh, it's brain dead. The vegetables, they can not be cut to someone's liking. You can cut yourself if you're a moron. Me, you have to be an idiot to screw up. Hmm, well, I think they're pretty similar in difficulty. It just depends on what you're preferring. While you do that, I'll get started on the actual curry so we can put the meat and veggies in after. <laughs> veggies. Ve Aren't you Japanese? Veggies? What? No, you're not an upbeat vegan. You're not allowed to say veggies. Or a parent, for that matter. Yeah, well, I've never really cut vegetables. <laughs> You've never really cut vegetables. Holy shit. Maybe I was joking when I said you could cut yourself on them. Maybe it's a good idea you do take meat. Enter gay joke about eating penis here. Well, I've never... Because of, you know, cooking meat. Yeah, yeah, ha, ha. Well, I've never really cut vegetables before, so maybe it's better if I don't mess around with knives too much. Do you think you could give me pointers on cooking the meat, though? Sure. Here, you take... <laughs> He's gotten to this age in life and he doesn't know how to cook meat. Oh boy. Oh boy. They weren't shitting it when they said that Natsume cooked all the time. He gestures towards the right side of the stove. Can you get out a frying pan? If 
Don't fucking ask what a frying pan is. <sighs> okay. Okay. Following Natsume's instructions carefully, Shu manages to fry up some decent looking beef. Meanwhile, the pot of curry is starting to smell delicious. <laughs> Chibi art. I really like Chibi art because it never ever looks out of place with a contrasting art style. <laughs> oh wait, hang on. Tra la la. <laughs> what is that around your head? I mean, what do I look like? Someone needs to get these people down to a doctor's. Their heads are way too big. Mine is my ego, but what's Natsume's? I mean, can sleep manifest in someone's head? Apparently. He's singing the working song from Snow White. Natsume is sure in high spirits. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that song is. I'm sorry, I don't watch Disney or Pixar, whatever one it is. It's probably Disney. Isn't this fun? Oh, I can just see the comments already. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If you really want to get angry, I've never seen The Lion King or Jungle Book. So if you really want something to get angry about, that's probably it. I guess it isn't too bad, but you're way too excited. You think so? You think so? But have you seen yourself? There is no way that someone maintains a smile that large without ramming a banana. I mean, come on. No one's that happy. We don't really do stuff like this much together, so I can't help but being excited. If you like cooking, I can always teach you how to cook other stuff. That might not be so bad. They say the quickest way to a person's heart is through their stomach. <laughs> Did they say that? <laughs> I'm not sure that's how that goes. Thinking of cooking for a special someone? Uh, maybe? Yeah, that's a weird response. You already heard from Chiaki, right? That I broke up with Ryu? Don't you usually have another person lined up? Don't be so cynical, it's the new me! Yeah, but I haven't dated anyone since then. I've been thinking and I don't think I'm going to do that kind of thing anymore. Um, just dating people for the hell of it, I mean. I see. Duh, there we go. Now we look normal again. We don't look like... We don't look like we've been recently bashed over the head with a baseball and made to eat, like, I don't know, several kilos of Prozac. Shoo! You've matured quite a bit when I wasn't looking. It makes me feel a little lonely, Natsume. Something about the way Natsume says that makes it hard for Shu to respond. There's a tense atmosphere as they finish cooking dinner. Tense? You can break the ice a whole manner of ways. As dinner time approaches, the other tenants who eat their meals at the dorms begin making their way downstairs to take their seats. Shu helps set the table and get everything ready. Hang on, we were cooking because someone's out, right? This is the amount we're cooking. That. <laughs> well, uh, we're gonna have to pull off a fucking Jesus-like miracle here. Uh, oh shit, no, that was going back, wasn't it? We want to go forward. Yukinari is noticeably absent during the meal, but it's a passing thought for Shu. Dead. 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 He is gone. His throat has probably been slit, or he's been hit by a car, or stabbed, shivved. Dead. After dinner, Shu is lounging around in his room when he hears a knock on the door. Hmm? Who is it? It's me, Yuki. Is... Oh, is Yukinari in there? Okay. Eyebrows raised, Chaki gets up and opens the door. You know you can just come in, right? Well, I didn't know if you guys were busy or anything. Busy doing what? Mutually masturbating each other? What? No, of course we're fine! Do I look like the studying type? Natsume looks around nervously. Yukinari's not here, Natsume. Why? Well, he's not back yet. Normally I don't pay much attention to what he does, but it's almost curfew and one of the disciplinary committee members will be here to do a headcount suit. What? What? I thought these were dorms, not a boarding school! Not a fucking prison! A head count? Holy shit, that's harsh! She's about to say something when he hears heavy running footsteps from the hallway. Moments later, one of the other tenants bursts into the room. Hey, I just got a call from the police for you, Mamma Mia. Shu and Natsume both look up. Natsume, that is. Police? Natsume, did you commit a crime? Oh! 
Come off it, Shu, really? You have no idea what this could be. That's your first thought, that Natsume committed a crime. Not that one of your friends has been dying, that you've already been warned about, but that Natsume committed a crime. I thought we were gonna change you. I really did. Now I see that there's no changing you. No way. They're still on li the line, so hurry downstairs. Okay, we'll come too. He's dead yet. Natsume looks sh rather sheepish at that, but goes downstairs anyway, Shu and Chiaki following closely behind him. Natsume picks up the main phone. Hello? Yes, this is Mamma Mia. Is something the matter? Oh, I- what? I see. Yes, I- yes. Natsume's face gets more grave by the second. Shu begins to fear the worst after Natsume hangs up. His face looks like he's just seen a ghost. Well, what are they calling you for? You really didn't do anything, did you? It wasn't about me. I was just listed as his emergency contact since I'm his roommate. Emergency. Suddenly everything adds up. What happened to Yukonari? Natsume! He's dead. They found him at the aquarium. Drowned. Look, all I can say is at least it didn't fucking happen at the bridge this time. Right? For what that's worth.